Hey, it's Mr. Parker here, and today we're going to talk about how to use an economic continuum line. So as you already know, all countries have economic systems that combine elements of both command and market economies. To visualize how these elements are mixed, we can plot a country's economy on a continuum line. And what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to give you some step-by-step -step instructions on how to draw this line and plot a country on it. So let's go ahead and set up our continuum line. Step one, of course, is to, well, draw a horizontal line on the page. Now in step two, we're going to need to add a couple of labels. Over here on the far left, we need to label that pure command. And on the far right, we need to label that pure market. Now step three is optional, but I always like to add the number 100 to the pure market end and a zero to the pure command end. I also like to tack sort of a little line in the middle just so I'll remember where the middle point is. Now putting these numbers here actually serves two purposes. First of all, it makes it easier for us to describe the location of any given point on the line by describing it as a percentage. You know, the middle would be 50%, for example, halfway between the middle and the pure market end would be 75%, and so forth. The other reason I like to put those numbers there is that it reminds us that anything over on the pure market end, all the way on the pure market end, that represents 100% economic freedom with no government control at all. And anything way over on the pure command end, well, you know, that represents 0% economic freedom with total government control. It's helpful, by the way, to remember that any country that is on the command side of this line is going to be a country with a lower GDP. And countries on the market side of the line will tend to have higher GDPs. Of course, no country is going to be all the way at the pure market end or all the way at the pure command end. The United States, for example, we consider ourselves a great example in the world of a market economy, but we're only at about 80%. North Korea, on the other hand, the one of the last remaining communist countries in the world, should be an example of a pure command economy, but even they are not all the way at the zero end. They're at about 5%. So you're wondering, how do we know where to place countries on this line? Well, to be honest, it's pretty subjective. But there are some clues in the description of each country's economy that can give us some guidance. So what I like to do is I like to look for keywords in the description of a given country's economy. Some of those words are what I would call command terms. And those are words or phrases that would make me want to slide that country's label toward the pure command end of the line. Other words and phrases are more market type terms that would uh, give me reason to slide that country's label toward the pure market end of our continuum line. So let's look at some examples here. If you see a country referred to as communist or socialist, it's probably going to be on the command side of this line. On the other hand, a capitalist country is going to be on the market side. If you hear that uh, businesses are state-owned, well, that's a very command economy type of idea. On the other hand, privately owned businesses will tend to be market economy. If you hear that wages and prices are set by a centralized authority, that's probably going to be a command economy. On the other hand, if prices and wages are set by supply and demand, that's a market economy. If industries are motivated to produce based on government quotas, then that's going to be a country that's probably going to be on the command side of this line. But if industries are motivated by profits, that's going to be a market economy. If your industries are heavily regulated in a country, that tends to be something that's going to be towards the command side of the line, whereas lightly regulated industries, that's going to be uh, on the market side. If you hear about property being owned collectively, uh, that's another word for government ownership, then that's going to be uh, a clue that'll put you towards the command end of the line. But if the property is privately owned, that's going to be uh, toward the market end of the line. 
Finally, if you uh, hear about services being socialized, like socialized health care, that's, that's another word for uh, government run. That's going to suggest that a country is towards the command side of the line, whereas privatized services, those are going to uh, be something that you'll find in more of a market economy. Let's look at hypothetical country A. We're going to read the description and look for some of those key words. Country A values the free market. The government has only limited business regulations, most of which are in place to protect worker safety. Nearly all industries are privately owned, with prices and wages determined by supply and demand. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the key terms here um, based on whether it's a command term or a market term. Market terms will be in green, command terms in pink, and actually if I look at this, these are all market terms. We're talking about a free market, uh, limited business regulations, privately owned, and supply and demand. These are going to point us towards the market end. It doesn't say all industries are privately owned, but nearly all. So I'm going to put this in at about 90%. All right, let's try example B. In country B, many industries are state-owned, but there's also a large private sector. Businesses are free to produce what they want, but the government regulates prices and wages. Healthcare is socialized, and private property rights are generally protected. Well, let's go ahead and highlight this. And as you can see, there's, there's a, both market terms here and command terms. It's pretty evenly balanced. So I would actually put this one somewhere around the middle. So I'm putting country B here at uh, about 50%. Finally, let's try country C. The economy of country C is based on collective principles. Nearly all industries are owned by the state and private property rights are not respected. In an effort to boost the GDP, the government has started to allow a limited number of people to open private businesses, but these are heavily regulated. Hmm. Well, yeah, there's a lot of command terms here. So this is looking very, very commandy, shall we say. But there is a, there's a little bit of a market terminology here. The government's allowing some people to open private businesses. So it's going to definitely be on the command end, but you know, there's a little bit of market here. So I'm going to put country C at about 10%. So there you have it, how to work with an economic continuum line.